Meeting will come as Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore is continuing to show defiance in the wake of sexual misconduct claims. President Trump is yet to weigh in on the allegations against Moore. Meanwhile, one of Moore's initial accusers gave her very first television interview earlier. Lee Korfman says Moore kissed her and touched her inappropriately when she was 14 years old and Moore was in his 30s. Moore has called those allegations completely false and politically motivated. I wouldn't exactly call it a date. I'd say it was a meet. Um, at 14, I was not dating. Um, at 14, I was not able to make those kind of choices. Um, I met him around the corner from my house. My mother did not know. And he took me to his home. Um, after arriving at his home, um, on the second occasion that I went with him, he basically laid out some blankets on the floor of his living room and proceeded to um, seduce me, I guess you would say. And during the course of that, he removed my clothing. Uh, he left the room and came back in wearing his white underwear. And um, he touched me over my clothing, what was left of it. And he um, tried to get me to touch him as well. Um, and at that point, I pulled back and said that I was not comfortable. And I got dressed, and he took me home. Um, but I was a 14-year-old child trying to play in an adult's world. Roy Moore denies these allegations <laughs> and further says he does not even know you. I wonder how many me's he doesn't know. Those developments in the Roy Moore scandal come as a second woman is stepping forward to accuse Democratic Senator Al Franken of sexual misconduct. Lindsay Menz tells CNN that Franken put his hand on her bottom as they posed for a picture at the Minnesota State Fair in 2010. The senator responded in a statement writing, quote, I take thousands of photos at the State Fair surrounded by hundreds of people, and I certainly don't remember taking this picture. I feel badly that Ms. Menz came away from our interaction feeling disrespected. So to discuss it all, we're going to bring in political reporter Kevin Robillard. He joins us now from Arlington, Virginia. OK, Kevin, uh, you know, we mentioned that uh, we haven't heard the president weigh in on Roy Moore yet at all, but he did weigh in on the first allegations against Senator Al Franken. Do you expect this to be the trend? You know, the feeling was maybe the president's not going to comment because he's had his own issues with accusations of sexual harassment. But as soon as he started to comment about Al Franken, we knew that wasn't the reason he wasn't saying anything. Yeah, it's pretty clear the reason the president isn't commenting is because he doesn't want to irritate parts of his base or hurt the Republican chances of winning an election. Uh, if you saw Kellyanne Conway this morning on Fox, Fox and Friends, which is sort of the president's mm -hmm. favorite show, mm -hmm. uh, he basically, she was basically saying, vote for Roy Moore without ever actually saying the words, vote for Roy Moore. Yeah. So, so listen, clearly let, me, there's... let me stop you there because you brought it up and I was going to ask you about it. We have that clip from Kellyanne Conway. Mm -hmm. Let's play that and then we'll talk about it. Doug Jones in Alabama, folks, don't be fooled. He'll be a vote against tax cuts. He's weak on crime, weak on borders. He's strong on raising your taxes. He's terrible for property owners. So and Doug Jones is a doctrinaire liberal, which is why he's not saying anything and why the media are right. trying to boost him. So vote Roy Moore? I'm telling you that we want the votes in, in, the, in the Senate to get this tax, this tax bill through. OK, so she wouldn't say the words vote for mm -hmm. Roy Moore, uh, but clearly uh, the suggestion is in that direction, focusing on tax reform. I guess that's the strategy then. Yeah, that sort of seems to be the strategy here. Yeah. And it's a clear break from the rest of the Republican Party in many ways, because uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Speaker Paul Ryan have both said that Moore should drop out of the race. So really, this is the president sort of standing alone by Roy Moore, a candidate uh, who he never sort of formally endorsed after the election, but is definitely someone that his supporters have backed in Alabama mm -hmm. and someone he is uh, backing now. So I want to get back to the taxes. We're sort of jumping all around. But I did want to ask you, you know, get your take on this a new allegation for Senator uh, Al, Al Franken that she, that he touched a woman inappropriately during a, a, a photo. Um, you know, there has he has said that if there's an ethics investigation, he will cooperate fully. There was speculation, right, when we've heard the first uh, accusation that maybe, like we've seen with other men, um, 
when there's one, there's others. Do you expect now that we may very well see an ethics uh, investigation? Yeah, I think there's there's definitely going to be the ethics investigation. <laughs> Part of the problem with the call for the ethics investigation in the beginning was that it was never quite clear what it's going to be investigating, since what was being alleged then happened before Franken was a senator, and the ethics committee wouldn't necessarily have jurisdiction. Now this ha is this is an event that happened while Franken was in elected office, after he got elected to the Senate. So this is something they actually could investigate, and it pr potentially indicates that there are other accusations out there that might emerge that could... Uh, end up, you know, hurting Franken and that the Ethics Committee could investigate. The question here is now, if there's more of these accusations, right. will pressure build on Franken to resign? And right. I think if we particularly see another, if we see a slew of them, it almost certainly will be. There's already been some Democrats back in Minnesota who have started uh, calling on Franken to resign. Yeah, because right now, I think uh, the, the, the statement that was issued was uh, that he was, you know, at home with his family and he has no plans to resign. But mm -hmm. as we've seen before, sometimes when there's a drip, 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 it becomes, mm -hmm. you know, more than just a few drops. It becomes a tidal wave. Um, so now, because, you know, the nature of this interview is that we're going to be hopping around, let's go back to taxes. Um, the full mm -hmm. Senate is planning to, hoping to vote on taxes after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Do you think we'll see mm -hmm. that happen? I think th they're certainly aiming for this really aggressive timeline, mm -hmm. uh, and they've generally managed to hold these votes. The votes haven't always been successful in uh, crossing the line when getting to 50 when they set these aggressive timelines. And look, uh, I think if they don't have the votes, they'll likely pull it back and maybe try again uh, either later in December or maybe in January. Right now, uh, Senate Republicans are pretty confident they're going to get the votes, but there are some sort of troublesome worry uh, signs from people. Uh, Tennessee Senator Bob Corker seems very concerned about how much this bill will add to the deficit and to the debt. Uh, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson is saying he can't vote for the bill in its president's form. Uh, it looks very much like Senator Susan Collins from Maine is going to be a no. Mm -hmm. And there's ways that they can adjust and try to get, particularly I think Ron Johnson's support, I think he's definitely a gettable vote for them. But some of these other uh, senators and the concerns they have uh, this might be a pretty tricky vote. This might be happening on a very, very thin margin. Do you think they're going to be able to hang on to this single-payer mandate, the removal of the single-payer mandate? Uh, that is definitely a tough one yeah. um, because, particularly for Collins, I think including the repeal of the individual mandate basically means there's no way that they can keep her vote in there. Uh, she's just not going to vote for that. I think it also makes it tricky for Lisa Murkowski, who, although she was sort of a problem vote for them on Obamacare, didn't support the repeal votes, uh, is, was sort of expected to be more of a natural vote for tax reform, including sort of this element of Obamacare in there might make this more complicated for her. Uh, and look, there were other senators who didn't, uh, who sort of weren't happy with the way health care repeal was going and, and were sort of unclear but managed to vote for it anyway just to sort of keep the process going. Uh, and some of those senators might object to that. That's uh, some of these other senators from states that expanded Medicaid uh, might have a problem with that. But right now, the fact that it got through the Senate Finance Committee, I think, is a good sign for people who want to keep that provision in. Right. Uh, but I do think it, it makes things a little bit more difficult for them. Because it certainly seemed like the House was kind of counting on the Senate to keep the individual mandate component because they didn't mm -hmm. include it in their bill because they wanted their bill to pass. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is all very complicated stuff. And, you know, ultimately what it looks like will probably happen if the Senate does pass a bill is the House will just take whatever the Senate did and pass it mm. because the Senate is the harder place to get the bill through. And altering their bill in any way might sort of make it harder for that bill to, a new version of the bill to pass the Senate. Right. So I think the House is definitely looking at that. But I think the House... That wouldn't, the individual mandate repeal won't necessarily be as big a problem in the House as it might be in the Senate. Okay, Politico's Kevin Robillard. Thank you so much, Kevin.